Welcome to the History of the Batman with London, brought to you by Meltdown Comics and Collectibles in Hollywood, California. This is where we relive the defining moments of one of the most iconic figures in comic book art and literature, the Batman. My name is Adam Silverstein, and as always, I'm joined by London. From the shadows, we are joined by the mysterious voice known as Shadow Adam. History of the Batman with London is produced and engineered by Mason Booker, who's in the room. And today we have a very, very special guest. But first, how you doing, London? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm excited about this week's episode. Um, we've got, you know, a big, big, big supporter of Meltdown, a big friend of the store. We have Nicole Campos from Loot Crate. Hello. How you hey. doing, Nicole? I'm good. Thanks for having me, you guys. <laughs> oh, man. This is uh, an honor. You've been a friend of the store for a long time, haven't you? I have. I have. Going back for uh, several jobs that I've held, <laughs> I've been a friend of Meltdown. So, yeah, I've been around for a while. Well, thanks for doing this. Sure, um, no problem. You're currently the lead community manager. Is that yes. the title yes. for Loot Crate? Yes. And what is that? Um, um, basically, I am one of the people who heads up the uh, community team at Loot Crate. So we are the people who, if you are a Loot Crate subscriber or if you follow us on social media, who are interacting with everybody on Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and Instagram and uh, sort of interacting with the community there and also usually um, at the various events that we do throughout the year, whether it's conventions or uh special events that we do. We've done a couple right here at Meltdown Comics. And so we're sort of the uh, champions for Loot Crate out in the geek community. Nice. Yeah. So Loot Crate, I am I guess we just kind of skipped over and assumed that everyone <laughs> knows what it is. But I've, I've actually heard you describe it as Comic-Con in a box. Yes, that's a way that we like to describe it. What does that mean? Um, well, basically what it is, is it's a subscription service where um, you receive, uh, you sign up for the subscription and then you receive a box of goodies every month um, delivered to your door, which is usually um, a value given the, like the... the um, dollar value of what you're receiving is far more than what you're paying. So basically, we're giving you um, like a, a mystery box of goodies um, at a, an incredible value. But it's also really cool uh, stuff across a variety of different franchises. They're always organized around a theme. So every month, there will be a particular theme that the various characters and franchises that we have included that month fall under and it's usually collectibles t-shirts sometimes comic books um and other really cool items um that the geek community tend to be pretty excited about and so we've been doing this for three years now we just celebrated our three-year anniversary and we're growing all the time so yeah it's a, it's a pretty exciting place to work london what do you think of loot crate I think Loot Crate, the idea of it is very cool because I have followers on social media who are Loot Crate subscribers and they are always so excited and curious to find out what they're going to get next month. And I like the fact that it's kind of a mystery that the details aren't revealed and it makes it more exciting. And I think... For some people, they may want to know what they're getting, but you know that it's going to be something great every time. And it touches on so many different aspects of like the geek and pop culture community that it's valuable, I think, for anyone who's interested in Batman or anything within the pop culture community. I think they really like it. So, yeah, Loot Crate is doing something very cool for a lot of people. Yeah, and it's actually got now a lot of copycats too, huh? Yeah, there's... there's Competition in the market. Competition. Um, That's but, what I meant to uh, say. <laughs> yeah, but we uh, we do um, we do like to think that we. It's important to us that as we do it, we continue to do it best. Right. And so, yeah, that's that's really where we're just call, uh, constantly trying to give the best uh, experience to our subscribers, and and we call them our looters every month. Right. Now, I want to obviously touch a little bit more on loot crate. But you, Nicole, are here at the History of the Batman podcast. I am. <laughs> All right. And so what are your Batman credentials? My Batman credentials. Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I'm i a fan of 
pretty much all superhero stories. Like that's that's one of my big fandoms is I really am into superhero comics. I always have been. Um, Batman's never been like my the top of my list, but I do have I have read certain stories that I've enjoyed quite a bit. And I mean, going back to childhood, like I I grew up in the generation where. Um, just in sort of popular culture that you were exposed to, not necessarily in comics form. It was like DC was everywhere. Marvel wasn't really around when I was a kid. And through the years, I've grown, like, I have to say the majority of my favorite characters in as far as the big two go are Marvel characters. That's because I discovered them later right. by reading comics when I was in high school. Um, but like when I was a kid, I mean, I have fond Batman memories because that everywhere you looked, he was one of the characters that defined, you know, superheroes, especially like growing up when I did late seventies, early eighties. So are you talking the show? Adam talking West? the show, talking the cartoons, talking yeah. just like the comic books that were available to me when I was a kid, um, that, that seemed to be sort of more more readily available were for the lar- for large part were DC comics. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we talk on this show a lot about the influence of the 66 show. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. And uh I mean that's it's huge. It's yeah. a huge cultural I don't I I don't know what stampede. I mean it's like in everyone's mind the corny language, golly gee Batman and it just becomes it became such a big thing right now loot crate th- th- there's been some good batman stuff in in loot crate right there has there has actually <laughs> uh, um just recently in the last few months we've had some some interesting things and it's funny that you that we segued into this from talking about the um the 1966 Batman show is uh, in the July crate. The theme well, last year we did a, a villains crate and a heroes crate over the summer, and they were two of the most uh, widely well received themes that we've done so far. So what we decided to do this summer is in the tradition of the summer blockbuster. We decided to do sequels to both <laughs> heroes and villains, um, and so we did heroes in July, and we just did villains in uh, August, and in the heroes crate. We actually had a figure. Um, we've been working really closely this year, and I'm going to continue to work very closely moving forward with um, Quantum Mechanics. If anyone is familiar with them, they're a wonderful uh, collectibles company based out of Southern California, and they have a ton of really amazing licenses. Um, they kind of made their mark with uh, doing stuff for Star Trek and Firefly and Battlestar Galactica. Um, but they have um, a style of figure that they're going to be doing more of and we're going to be working them really closely called they started out calling them Q-Pops and I think they they might be calling them something else but they're uh, really cool little stylized um, like sort of not chibi but they're small and they have a sort of animated look to them but they also evoke the characters really well and so what we did was they had already done a Batman one um, but they did one for us for the July uh, loot crate for the hero's crate, which was a variant of that Batman figure. And he's painted like the Adam West Batman. And he comes in a special box that is styled like the artwork of the title credits of the Batman series. So yeah, we were really excited to have that. That one. So I'm a subscriber to loot crate yes. and I got that and I thought it was the greatest toy and it was so great that I couldn't keep it myself. I had to. I, 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 I had to give it to London. He gave it to me. He did. And it's awesome. I love it. It turned out really good. And what's yes. what's fun with this uh, particular series too? And they've done other ones at Quantum Mechanics. They did um, ones for the uh, for the original Star Trek series. I think they did a set of four, and then I think they did another another franchise as well that I can't think of. But they're going to be doing a lot more of them. And what's fun with the Q part of it is relates to is is partially quantum mechanics, but also partially quotes because they come with a little plastic speech bubble that attaches to the base that they stand on and it comes with a little um saying on it already but you can peel the sticker off and then it also comes with a dry erase marker and you can write whatever quote you want the figure to say and you can change it as often as you want so it's fun it's not only a cool figure but it's something you can interact with and you can personalize it exactly you can personalize it any way you want (laughs) where's yours london Mine is on my desk, and I really like the figure because it's in the 
66 colors, the light blues and grays. But mm-hmm. I love how he's perched on like a gargoyle type yeah. thing. And the stance is very, for I guess a more modern audience, it's more like the Jim Lee Batman 608 cover. The yeah, because it is this, kind I of mean, it ica- is. It's in that iconic stance that everyone recognizes, but it still has that Batman 66 feel. So I think a lot of people can get more from it. I, I yeah, really like yeah it. <laughs> it's cool because, I mean, we, we like I said, it's a variant of the figure that they had done previously. So we're kind of taking the other, um, the other figure and then doing sort of a mashup of that with the aesthetic of the, the 66 yeah. Batman. So, so yes, it is proudly on my desk. Cool. But there was another <laughs> cool Batman uh, item in that box as well. Yes. That I also thought was so cool and I had to give to London because <laughs> as much as I'm I'm kind of a Marvel guy too yeah. from growing up as well. My first character that I ever loved was Batman. Mm-hmm. But then as I got older and really got into comic books, I got into the Marvel world. And so as as soon as I get anything that's pretty amazing Batman, I give it to London <laughs> to feed the collection. But London, you want to say what, what the other thing was? That was the the keychain Batarang, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a, key, it's a keychain <laughs> that is styled to look like a Batarang. I mean, it, and it really does. When you hold it, it's very... It's it has weight. heft to yes. it. Yeah, it really does. Um, but what it actually is, is it's a multi-tool. So it's got a, a little cut out in the middle which is a, a bottle opener yeah. and then on either side if you look very closely at the tips of the wings on either side there's a flathead screwdriver and a phillips head screwdriver <laughs> wow. so it's it's really it's the kind of thing that that we actually um we've noticed we've done a few things similar to this in the past months and we've gotten a lot of really positive feedback from people when we put something in the crate which has certain elements to it one of which is that it feels very authentic like we know that that's a multi-tool but it feels like a batarang and it feels like a like a something that came right out of batman's world like something that he would use yeah and so when it has that sort of authenticity of character to it people really respond to that but also just things that are useful Things that, you know, are not just something that, like, you know, obviously figures are awesome and, that you know, you're going to put them on your shelf and you love to look at them every day or if it's on your desk at work or whatever. But, like, things that people can interact with and actually use on a day-to-day basis. Oh, yeah. People love stuff like that. And so we've we've definitely started looking at options of doing more stuff like that in the future. And we've had a few items. That's one of them. We also had... Um, a Marvel ice cube tray that people flipped out over. I mean, it's meant to make ice cubes, but we saw people making everything from candy oh, yeah. to little miniature soaps. I kept that one. Somebody had a recipe. <laughs> somebody had a recipe for um, uh, bath crayons, like those. Oh wow! Little soaps that, but like like I, bath fizzies or. Well, no, they're they're for kids. They're like um, they're technically it's soap, but like I, I forget exactly what it else is you put in it. But basically, it makes little things where they can the kids can write on the walls when they're in the bathtub, and then and mom just washes. Oh off. wow! Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like people made so many cool things with it. It was amazing. So that and that bat batarang. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't even think you could take that on a plane. I think that <laughs> you might, might not be able to. Yeah, I don't. I mean, know. It, it's funny. I don't know that we've had. I don't know that we've had anybody mention that. I do know that we had some people that were like, I had to figure out how to hold it to open a bottle because they were holding it the other way around, and like the ears on the bat symbol were like digging into their palm. They're like, this can't be right. <laughs> so they turned it around and then they finally figured it out. Yeah. Well, that that was that's definitely a cool thing. And then you just, as you said, had the villains pack. So, yes. So the villains, obviously, you have the heroes. So it's all hero themed. You got your Batman's and your other. Who else was in there? Superman was uh, was Spider Man. Uh, in the heroes crate, we had. Um... Oh gosh. What that uh, was that that might have been the Avengers uh, ice tray. The no, game. the Avengers Ice Tray was in the May crate, which oh. was the Unite crate, which was kind of all about teams. Okay. Um, so, yeah, gosh, what else did we have in the Heroes crate? I'm completely drawing a blank now. Sorry. Um, we, we got the villains, though, because it's the opposite. Yes, yes. So It's the, so funny because I've been doing, like, my mind has been on villains for the last month. And yeah. so, yeah, it's funny. Um, but uh, as far as the, um, uh, as the villains crate goes, we... One thing we did with this crate was we had a lot of feedback from people about 
wanting there to be more sort of higher end items because we usually have a, a mix of like a couple of really cool higher end collectibles or, or other wearables and stuff and then some sort of smaller things and then like there might be also you know um uh, like some digital downloads and things like that. So there's like a tier system of that. And so we wanted to try to do as many of the higher quality things as possible in one crate. And so we actually had slightly fewer items in, than usual, but the items were all of much higher quality. And for the most part, people have really been responding to the fact that like every item in the crate was significant. Um, and what we did um, for the villains crate was we actually had, uh, this also was through quantum mechanics, they have these really cool block wooden block figures. Oh yeah, that are like kind of they're very stylized and almost like modern looking. Um, and so they did a Joker one with us that had never been done before. They've they've done Batman ones and they've done Superman ones under their DC license, but they'd never done a Joker one before. And he's so cool. Like you can actually take his head and his hands out and like move them around. And if you look really closely at the mouth. At the mouth, because his mouth is kind of a squiggle, so it looks like his mouth is all kind of gnarled up. But if you look very closely at his mouth, it says, ha-ha. Yeah, and that, there was actually another mouth. Or yeah, another. I forget, if you flip yeah. the head around, the other mouth says something. I, I yeah. can't remember what it is. But I yeah. gave that one to London. Yes, of course you did. I, <laughs> I am the proud owner of that as well. And yeah, it's very stylized. It's very cool. So, London, did you open that one, or is that staying in the no, package? No, I have not opened that one. Uh yeah, the that Hugh one. Pop Batman is on my desk, but that one I don't think I'm gonna open. It's pretty it. cool. Yeah. <laughs> the packaging is pretty cool too. And of course, now yes. that I I stopped for a moment about like thinking too hard about it, I remember everything that was in the Heroes Crate. We also had um, a Wonder Woman DC bombshells poster. Yes, which was she can amazing. Do it. Yes, yes. We were really I happy that to on my include fridge. that because it was right <laughs> as the comics. That comic series was about to come out, and I love the artwork for that. It's yes. just amazing. Um, and then we also had uh, a really cool book that we did through Random House, which was the first hardcover book we'd ever included. It's called the League of uh, the League of Regrettable Superheroes, and it's basically a history book of a bunch of very odd obscure superheroes from like the golden era of comics and it kind of talks about them and so (laughs) it's wonderful because it's the kind of thing where a lot we saw a lot of photos of parents with their kids like sitting he's like oh my god he's so excited he's got a book he's gonna sit down and read all about all these (laughs) obscure superheroes that nobody remembers that was a very cool book yeah it's it's really cool it's very again it's something that's it's got a lot of heft to it but it's also just informationally there's a ton of reading in there that was the first time. It was that the first time you guys had done a book like that with that. Much? The first time we'd done a book of that style. We've done books before. We had um, Ready Player One. The novel was in the February crate. Um, but yeah, the books so far that we've done have been really well received. So we'll probably continue to do a book or two periodically. Yeah. Keeping on the Batman theme, has there been any other Batman items, even villain items that <laughs> uh, that you remember? That Luke Kratos has put out? Yeah, yeah. We had um, in December, periodically we do uh, exclusive Funko Pops. And in December we had the um, Batman Joker Funko Pops. It was it was a, wasn't it the Batman Joker Joker or Batman Joker it was Batman? The, it was a Batman painted like the Joker. Right. Yes. So, yeah. So it was, it, he's got the, the spirally eyes and the... Grin. Sorry, so, London. Yeah. I didn't give that one to you. Yeah. I, I gave that to my <laughs> that kids. That one's hard to give away. Yeah. That one is pretty awesome. No, but I am the owner of it, though. Oh, I, yeah. I had to. So good. Yeah, that <laughs> one is, uh... and it's still in the box. That's not coming out of the box. Yeah, that one usually is, with Funkos, I keep them in the box. Yeah, yeah people do. <laughs> it's funny, like, like so many people are very that are heavy collectors of Funkos, like keep them in the box and then have like their giant display yeah. of boxes in their. We house. have a wall of Funkos. I go through periods <laughs> where I'm like, and I'm not by no means a huge collector. When it comes to Funkos, I usually just buy the characters that I love the most, regardless of what the the franchises and right. rarely do I feel like I have to have all of them. <laughs> um, but I go through periods of like, oh, should I keep it in the box? But then I like having all of mine out on my desk at work. So I understand. Yeah. I, I have just, I have two that I always keep with me in my, in my Batman backpack. <laughs> I have the, the Dark Knight Rises Bane figure. Oh, right. And I have that Adam 66 Batman. Oh, nice. And so, I take them with me wherever I go. And if I'm somewhere, I'll probably take a picture 
of them somewhere and they have little adventures. And yeah, I put them on the. <laughs> that's funny. I, I put them on Instagram. That have done that with their figures before too, yeah. <laughs> but those are the only two. All the other probably hundred <laughs> that we have <laughs> are just in boxes. Yeah. Including the 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 loot crate exclusive. That's cool. Because I loved it. I saw it like, oh, I have to have it. So I it's had to have awesome. that. Crate. It's pretty awesome. What what do you guys think is the appeal of the Funko figures? I've, I've honestly, I've had this conversation with people. I feel like it's the beanie babies of the geek community. Like, because there's so many of them and they're very cute. Yes. And they have a sort of like, you know, they do certain num- ones of them and they're all numbered and it's kind of like this, it, it, it's almost like, you know, there's so many franchises that they do now. It's like, People that are into collecting find it something that's easy to collect and easy to sort of keep up with. And, like, you know, you can have this awesome, impressive collection. Right. And the thing is with a lot of collectibles, sometimes it can be pricey. But yeah. you can get a Funko for, like, 10 bucks. Mm. <laughs> I think price has a lot to do with it. And, of course, the appeal aesthetically. They're cute. And and you can There's a lot. Them, yeah. But... And, I mean, there's a lot of really cool – and I, I feel like there's a lot of emerging uh, – emerging collectors too that are doing cool stuff now that are like and part of the reason why you know we're working with quantum mechanics is they're great you know they're great friends of ours but like we're seeing what they're doing with the q pops and we're like this is something that could super duper take off just a matter of like how many franchises are they working with and it's like you know what's going to be the next big collectible because i feel like collectibles are really kind of moving now into that arena where they are a lot more affordable it's not just – and this is nothing to say, you know, against, like, the super high-end ones. I mean, I know people that love their $200 sideshow figures, and they're amazing and gorgeous, and, you know, they display them, and it's fantastic. But, like, not everybody can save up and, you know, collect oh, yeah. that much right. for that kind of, of a right. figure. Um, but, yeah, I, I do sort of see a trend moving more towards other – Really highly detailed, very cool looking collectibles. Titan merchandise also are doing this as well with the blind box figures that they do, which if you look at them, you know, they have that sort of look where they're blocky and they all have like the say, the bodies that are shaped the same way. But when you actually look at those figures, they're highly detailed and the, the face molds that they do are pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Or what are you seeing, London, in all these? Are you, are you, are you seeing that too? Where all these different, you know, cute, I mean, because a lot of them are cutesy. I mean, they're kind of cutesy figures. It's not exactly the right. sideshows or the Bowen statues or the Marvel Legends. We're talking cutesy figures. And, and which can be disconcerting sometimes when you see ones for, like, Hannibal. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or, like, the meanest characters on Game of Thrones or something like right. that. Right. Yeah. That's why when I saw the Bane one for the first time, Bane, and he's so threatening especially within that context it's just it's it's an appeal and a lot of people i've known like they they would rather have the sideshows and the hot toys and all those figures but i think it's just something easy to easier to acquire because now funko is everywhere you can get them almost at any store it feels like but yeah it's kind of a way to ha- start collecting, especially if you like Star Trek, for instance, like Shadow Adam, he loves Star Trek. So he w- he can get that whole series easier than maybe getting just one figure of a sideshow. I think it's easier for the consumer to get and just the appeal of it. I, yeah, it's kind of an era of they kind of like the cute pop type of look. And you can even see that in some comic books i think one of the artists like scotty young he has he his one of his styles is doing kind of like the marvel babies and it's kind of it has a fun appeal and it's not just for kids it's for and and now that especially even doing the show it's for adults who love the comics and everything and can and now funko is going major with having all pop culture they just released a friends series off of the tv show and what you yeah. can get a chandler funko yes and my and my mom and i are obsessed with friends and so she doesn't even collect funko because she's like i need all six of those friends it's just it appeals to 
everyone now and it can kind of start people collecting and i think that's what funko's aiming that it's for it can be for everybody and you can either collect just the heroes which is what i do or you can collect all of them if you just feel the need to have all but it's just growing and yeah, that it's... would be nuts to see the all <laughs> funko collection <laughs> you know someone out there has it oh Definitely. It's yeah. <laughs> but no, I do, I do think that the point that you were making was, was true that, you know, a lot of the times it is just, it, it, there is something fun about the, the, you know, chibi characters or the cute styled, you know, things where it does, it doesn't necessarily like infantilize the characters, but it's fun and it's something different where, right. you know, you can always go back to those darker storylines. But like, I mean, for example, and you mentioned Scotty Young, the the Marvel pins that they did at Comic Con that were only available at the Marvel booth in like certain sets, and it's all the Sc- Scotty Young version of the characters. Yeah, those were like going f- by like half way through the day every day. Those were sold out. <laughs> like I had to get there, but I had my exhibitor badge, and I had to get a set of those for a friend of mine. <laughs> and I was like, the only thing I needed to do, I'm like, I have to do get that for my friend and I had to get the daredevil shirt for myself. That was the only thing you I got a daredevil about. shirt. That's my favorite character. <laughs> ha, high five. Yeah. Who, what, what was the daredevil shirt? That it, you well, got? there was a couple of them. There was one that the one that I wanted was the one that said, um, Fogwell's gym, New York city. Nice. Oh, yeah. That was the one that I wanted. Really History bad. of the daredevil. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, London. Adam's jealous. Yeah. He wants that shirt. I want that shirt. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I went and Marvel and, gave that away. No, they had it for sale at their booth. Oh, wow. They had a bunch of like exclusive t-shirts from like Avengers and all kinds How'd of stuff. How'd you miss booth. that? Uh. <laughs> I know, man. But um, but yeah, those Scotty Young pins, like halfway through the day, they were selling they were out flying. of like all the sets. And like, especially the, like, the ones that were blind box, people were going crazy. My friend had me buy like three sets just because she's like, I have to get Cap- Captain Marvel. And I, it was, I felt so bad because I didn't have Captain Marvel in my set. And she's like, oh God. And she's like calling various people like, did you get Captain Marvel? Get it? And finally she did find one. So yay. But yeah. <laughs> The, Mission was, accomplished. Exactly. But that's how it gets sometimes. You're like, well, got to get the ones that you want, man. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and that is sort of what Loot Crate is trying to recreate. Yeah, it's true. I mean, honestly, we have, for the most part, our, our assortments that we do every month, everybody gets the same thing. Um, occasionally, we do variants within the box, and then we do see... Um, you know, uh, uh, people who have our mobile app who communicate with each other on the fan wall on our mobile app, they've sort of established a little community there. And then also, like, they talk to each other on our Reddit page. We have a subreddit. And so you'll see a lot of collectors will touch base with one another along those lines in that context, and they will trade with each other for the stuff that they want. Um, So, like, for example... And I'm sure this is going to start happening, but like we're still in the pro- we're at the very end stage of where all of the uh, villains crates have been shipping, um, and so we did um, mugs for the first time. We've oh never yeah, done mugs before. Cool. And in the I got uh, my carnage mug. Do you get carnage? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other mug was venom. Okay. And so we did a fifty fifty split. Half the people got venom, and half the people got carnage. And so I know already we've ha- had some people that have been like, I really wanted the Venom one. Does anybody want to trade? And so they find each other and they can trade with one another. And that's one of the things that we're really kind of trying to um, engender among yeah, the community. You're growing community. Like, yeah, right. exactly. I mean, and it's 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 really strong right now as it is. But again, yeah, it's constantly growing. And I mean, we've had that a few times. In November, we did um, a miniature Mega Man helmet for the battle crate in November, and that came in four colors. And so people were constantly turning back and forth, like, I have the green one, I want the red one, oh, I've got the blue one, I want the, you know, so yeah. It's it's fun to see them kind of um, make new friends as, yeah. a, as a venture of being a collector that way too. Have, with this community that's growing within Loot Crate, have, when you create the different boxes for each month that has the different themes, do you take any suggestions or do you look at people like oh I would want to see this or this character how is the process of actually deciding 
which characters out of all of the villains, let's say, or all the heroes that are out there, which ones to include in the box? Is not is that a kind of daunting process? It, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it can be done. We have a really fantastic group of people on the product team okay. um, who are merchandisers and uh, procurement, and they know – you know, some of them really know their geek stuff, and then also some of them really know merchandising and licensing and sourcing and vendors, and then some of them know both. And so, you know, between all of them, they do an amazing job every month of, like, keeping up with trends and seeing what's out there. So some of it can be things that we know are coming up and that people are going to be interested in. I mean, obviously, we included Avengers in the make rate because we knew the movie was coming out and people were right. going to be talking about Avengers. So we thought, well, if we can get a cool Avengers item, let's put something in. And we thought the ice cube tray was cool. It was something that people wouldn't be expecting. Um, then, so some of it is knowing what's coming up and what pe- is going to be on people's minds that month. There's also, like... People have given us suggestions all the time. We, we also right. do have a survey that comes out every month oh, okay. for our subscribers. They get an email survey where they can give us feedback on that month's crate and also any other feedback they want to give us. So sometimes they do a freely offer ideas of like, I'd like to see this more of this character. I'd like to see more of these kinds of themes. And, you know, we're, we're, we're always – we're trying not to repeat ourselves too much. Right. Which, as we grow and, and you Keep know – Keep it fresh it, and it's original. Hard. It's hard to not repeat yourself. I mean, part of the reason why we did here and villains again was because they were so popular and we were aware of the fact that we were doing a theme we had done already but we tried to include as many characters that hadn't been included the last time as possible um so yeah there's that aspect of it too and and so a lot of thought goes into it a lot of just knowing which characters are popular not only from the feedback we get on the survey but the way that people interact with us on social media and like you know we're putting out content all the time that is just fun stuff that we found online or stuff that is news that people are talking about whether it's you know movie news or gaming news or thing comic book news things like that um and when we see people really react to a specific franchise especially if it's one we haven't included before, and then that kind of goes in the bank and you're like, okay, well, we need to think about including that franchise okay. down the line. Something that I have noticed while following you guys on Twitter is that your customer service is amazing. <laughs> there is so much positive feedback, of, and I'm sure it must – be go- that department goes insane. I can't even <laughs> imagine. It could be we, from if someone maybe didn't get their box, or I don't know if you even get complaints if people don't like what they received. I oh, have yeah, we no hear idea. It all. We hear it all. <laughs> but I hear that it's stellar, that the customer service is so great. They're very, very dedicated. We have a huge customer service department. It started out with like maybe just five or six people. And it's grown to a team of like, I think 25 or 30 people. (laughs) And I mean, it's just, it's huge. And they are, you know, they work seven days a week. Not all of them, you know, some of them work like Wednesday through Sunday. Right. Um, But they're constantly there answering people's um, uh, tickets and... They have a really good response time. I mean, sometimes they get a little backed up when it's the month, the period of the month where everyone's receiving their crates and we're getting a higher volume of tickets than usual. But they're phenomenal about dealing with everyone's um, tickets in a timely fashion, making sure that they help them out. And I mean, we're we're pretty good about, you know, if if your postman – left your crate on your doorstep in the rain and everything got ruined inside, <laughs> it got soaked, we'll send you a replacement. I mean, you that's know, that's so cool. There's there's sometimes there's things that can't be helped. Or like, you know, if if FedEx was not careful with like when we have a mug in the thing and your mug got right. chipped or cracked, we're happy to send you a replacement. Um and it, it can be tricky for like from my perspective, um, being on the social media team because you know, we we can answer a lot of questions. There's a lot of information that we do know that we can easily handle and answer right. for people. But, like, when it comes to actual, like, account and billing in and, like, <laughs> looking up the person's tracking and stuff, we don't have access to that. They have to go to support. So there's a lot of, like, triaging of, of questions that people have and things like that. But, yeah, for the most part, we try to, to be as on top of it as possible. Yeah, because customer service for any company is so important. But I've just heard... 
five stars all around. So I wanted to commend oh, you guys you. for that because that's what I always I will be see. sure to let the support yeah. team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, Nicole, you just also touched on social media. Yes. I and mean, that's a huge part of what you guys are doing right now. Uh, London is also done a ton of social media on the History of the Batman yeah. Instagram page. Yes. And <laughs> as, as just an individual, what she's done has been pretty amazing. I mean, yeah. she's about to hit 200,000 followers. I know, that's great. Which is that's insane. So cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's all just one person. What, what, may, what, what goes into your team, the social media team? Or well, is it a, a defined social media team? Oh, you no, know, it, it definitely is a defined team. I mean, it started out where, you know, when they were the first year and a half, particularly of, of Loot Crate's existence, you know, they it, it was the handful of people who were working on marketing and stuff. And then Matthew, who's our co-founder, who still tweets from time to time. He just jumps in there because, you know, he's it's his baby. And, you know, he's, <laughs> he wants to interact with people. If he wants to say something, he can jump on Twitter and send something out. Um, but, like, we, we definitely have a dedicated team who are split across various channels. Like, for example, I'm the one who heads up putting content onto Twitter, but I also moderate Twitter. And I also moderate the mobile app, and I also, you know, do other things. But then we also have um, uh, community managers, some of whom are working on Facebook, some of whom are working on Instagram, some of whom are working on, um, you know, other channels. We have Google Plus and, and Tumblr. They have smaller followings, but they do have their own followings as well. And so, you know, we throughout the day are all not only putting out content and like getting feedback and, and really interacting with people about the theme that month's theme or about what is cool and that's happening in the community or like any events that we're doing. For example, we're going to be promoting the hell out of um, PAX because we're recording this the day before PAX starts on the weekend. So we're going to be doing that as well. Um, but also just like that, like I said, moderating comments from people and, and, right. and answering questions and making sure that, you know, sometimes there are questions we can't answer, <laughs> like because of the fact that we are a mystery crate, mm. we are very protective of spoilers yes. and we don't want to let, like at the beginning of every month or I say the beginning of the month, but it's actually a few days before the beginning of the month is when we announce the, the new theme for the upcoming month. And, you know, we'll get people that will press us for information about when are you guys going to do more collectibles? When are you going to do more Funko Pops? When are you going to do more T-shirts and that kind of thing? And, you know, we can't tell you <laughs> until we do the <laughs> announcement for that month. We are working on it. Right. You know, we do – we have crates planned out through the end of this year and into 2016. We're already starting. Nice. Um, but, yeah, we, we're very protective of spoilers and we try – so we try to answer – we try to interact as much as possible and give them as much information always as we can while still at the same time, you know, preserving that mystery. Mm. <laughs> it's the key, right? Do you want yes. to, I mean, that's the key to preserve the mystery. Exactly. You... Because people really love it. I mean, people look forward to getting their crates every month. And for some people, it's a family thing. Like, you know, mom and dad geeks who are sort of, you know, teaching all of this stuff to their kids and they look forward to when the loot crate comes and they all open it together and oh. they share it. And they, you know, sometimes the kids, will, they'll be like, we had to get another one because they were fighting over oh, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got the, I got a six and eight year old and when the loot crate box comes in, <laughs> first of all, I tell them it's mine because I know it's going to be a fight. Yeah. And then they're like, can we open it with you? Can we open it with you? And then I end up giving them pretty much all the stuff anyway. <laughs> but, it, it becomes something that I then say to them, okay, well, let's open it up together. Or if yes. one of them comes in, they are like, I want to open it now. No, wait for your brother. And so it becomes yeah. a family gathering. Fa and then sometimes it actually brings people together. And that's also part of what's fun about being on the community team. And the support team gets this too. Um, when we get feedback from people, or like we had a really wonderful um, email from this woman who had a teenage son who he's just at that age where like everything she says he's you know doesn't want to listen they fight all the time and they just like he's in that rebellious teenage phase um but then she they started getting loot crates and that was something where it was like the one thing that they do together and that they look forward to and it kind of smoothed some of that over between them and it's That's like really nice yeah and so we get stories like that all the time or we get like you know we hear from 
guys who were, you know, stationed in Afghanistan who their family sends them loot crates. And like, that's the big deal. Like when the loot crate comes, I mean, when they get mail period, it's amazing. But when the loot crate comes in, it's like a big thing that brightens their day. That is an awesome story. Yeah. Yeah. That is really cool. What about, um, so you can't talk about what's coming in the future. I can't talk in detail okay. about I can't and I can't talk past like this upcoming month. Right, right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So is how does Batman um how does how does the looters respond to Batman stuff? Pretty darn well. Pretty darn well. He anytime we have Batman stuff in a crate, it's always always popular i mean there are certain characters that are just evergreen that people are always gonna love and like we do have people that are less into the superhero stuff um like we we tried to and also like in the heroes crate we tried to include other things like we had a legend of zelda item in there and we had a star trek item in there so we try to think about star trek shadow adam yes we had a star (laughs) trek character um so we try to include items that are similar to theme but maybe something that you're not quite thinking of but, I mean, we're always probably going to continue to come back to, to Batman periodically because he is an evergreen. He's a character that people just always gravitate towards. Well, it's uh, we know that here at the History of the Batman, <laughs> don't we, London? Definitely. London, what, what would you want to see in a loot crate? I mean, you, you are not... I mean, you're a huge collector. This is... You are basically giving loot crate some free advice here. <laughs> uh... Well, from one of the things I really enjoyed, actually, and I I don't know the process of how you get Loot Crate exclusives with certain companies, but in the December box, there was a Batman variant cover. Ah, I believe it was a Greg Capullo for uh, Zero and and it was amazing. Yeah. And that was, even though I loved the Funko, the Batman Joker Funko. Yeah. I really liked that. And maybe it's just because I love comic books, but I would, I don't know. I would like to see things like that. I know people love variants just in general. And on Nerd Wednesdays, when they go get new comics and the variants are there, they get those too. So that's why it's it's interesting because you have so many different types of items within the box. It's always something different. And you say you like to keep it kind of fresh and you want to not repeat the same things right and, and even though you have the heroes and the villains there were different types of items for the heroes and the villains but something either with comics i really enjoy and of course i love funko so that's bias so i can't really say more funko because i'm sure you hear that all the time <laughs> but the funko figures i really like but seeing a comic in there i think would be really cool and a special one and one you can't get at the stores well that's what we tend to do i mean anytime <laughs> that we include a get. comic in a crate we always try to make sure that it's a variant of some yeah. kind. We, you know we 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 include as many exclusives usually every month as we can, um, depending on who we're working with and depending on what the theme is for that month. But as far as comics go, we definitely always try to, anytime we include a comic, make sure that it's a variant cover uh, that is exclusive to us. Um, and we, we've we included um, issues like, for example, that issue was, I believe it was number 36. And mm-hmm. so we have done issues like that in the past where we've kind of jumped in in the middle of the run, but we're trying to steer away from that now because okay. also a part of the reason what we try to do is um, to not only get something cool for the fans of that character, but also to sort of introduce people to a new line of comics that maybe are coming or a new storyline that is coming out. So we're trying to stick to number ones as much yeah, as possible. Yeah, I was going to say you're going to aim for doing number Or, ones. for example, a one-shot like we did um, okay. in May. We had the uh, – Bravest Warriors one shot that we did with Boom, and that was actually a double issue one shot that was like five or six stories, but it was a sort of self contained, you know, collectible. That's issue. what I would want so, a Batman yeah. one shot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that That's would be so like, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> for sure. I mean, I'm sure we'll be doing more stuff like that too. <laughs> but you guys, I mean, Loot Crate is not only providing its customers with cool stuff, which clearly it does. But it's also been really helpful to creators, right? I mean, Black Orphan, is that? Orphan Black. Orphan Black, sorry, my yes. bad. <laughs> my bad. But that was a comic that was number one. Yes. Because of Loot Crate. Yes. <laughs> well, what's funny is because Orphan Black has a massive fan base online for the TV show, like a really dedicated yes 
Like they're, they're, the show's numbers have not been all that great. I mean, they're on BBC America, so obviously it's not going to have the same numbers as like, you know, a lot of these other shows. Um, but I mean, it's basic cable. But like the fan base is really huge for that show online. And, and, and so we knew it would be something that would be popular and that a lot of our, our subscribers are into. But the comic that's based on the show was actually brand new to IDW. So... Um, it was ki the kind of thing where we were like, we know where this theme is coming up and we think Orphan Black would be a good fit. And there's a lot of fans of the show at Loot Crate. So we worked with IDW to do that cover. And yeah, I mean, it's just as, as a result of the number of subscribers that we have, you know, the number of issues, sheer number of issues that we buy usually means that that comic does well that month. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's awesome. I mean, yeah, it's so innovative. Yeah, yeah, and if you're a creator and you've got you want to do something new exclusive for Loot Crate, I mean, is that possible? Can a creator do that? Um, I guess yeah, I mean theoretically it is possible. You know, we we we're always, you know, wanting to hear from creators who who want to work with us and like try to work with them as much as possible and we have, you know, heard from from creators who are like I've got this thing coming out, is maybe there's some way we can work together. Um, it's always a matter of just finding the right timing because yeah. a lot of the times, you know, an issue is already scheduled, like they know it's coming, even if it's like five or six months down the line, we may have already set the theme for that month. And yeah. so it's always a case of like, we don't know if it's necessarily going to be a good fit. Do we want to wait? Do we want to maybe do, um, like, a, can we do a number one later after it comes out? Is that even viable? So like, there's a lot of variables that are yeah. attached to it. And, but sometimes, you know, you are able to make it fit. And we are going to be, you know, we've done specialty crates in the past, and that's something that we've never sort of um, counted out doing additional, like, one-off crates of a particular theme. So there's also that opportunity where maybe down the line we'll be able to work with creators a little more closely on one-off you know, there's this many of this crate and that's done, which is kind of what we do at conventions. We have a certain number of crates that we did for San Diego Comic-Con and when right. they were gone, they were gone. So yeah, we're going to... That booth was probably crazy. Continue. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I walked by and the line was wrapped around 10 times long, but yeah. But I heard from people who got the box, they're like, they really loved it. They loved it. The yeah, we were really yeah, happy. I mean, really that was positive. something that, that the product team pulled together those crates incredibly fast on the timeline that we had. And I mean, it was, we were all really blown away by what they were able to pull off because every single item, like we usually have at like, you know, two or three, sometimes even four exclusives in the monthly crate. Every single item in both of the San Diego assortments that we did was exclusive to Comic-Con and will not be offered again. That's cool. So that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it definitely paid off definitely paid off so you have actually started something nicole with loot crate and meltdown which i think is yeah. huge you, you briefly mentioned it i and but it was the looter meetups yes can i think this is a great concept because it not only gets people um well i'll let you tell what the concept is because i think it's a great thing and a really incredible way to build community that I don't think a lot of companies are even in tune with. Right. Well, what we do at the Looter Meetups is um, try to put the focus on the subscribers that we, you know, interact with every month and have it be the kind of thing where looters can get together and meet each other, but also sort of interact with the product in a particular way. And I was kind of talking about like, you know, people that would want to meet online and exchange variants of a right. particular thing. What we have done at the Looter Meetups is have everyone bring their loot down. And what we'll also do is have like a starter table where we'll bring if we have, you know, any overstock of some items at the, at the factory, at the factory, at the warehouse. <laughs> um, and so we'll bring those down and then people can, you know, bring their loot and basically trade with us or trade with each other. If there's like a one really cool item that they have, they want another one of because they want to give it to their boyfriend or, you know, their like Groot or, socks, like Groot socks. Yeah, exactly. If you want another spare pair of Groot socks or you want like 
um, the Space Invaders tie that we did in January or something like that. Like you can trade with each other. Um, and, you know, we basically we keep the rules very simple. It's like whatever you think is a fair trade, just as long as like we're like no cash transactions. This is not a sale. But whatever you guys think is a fair trade amongst each other, go for it. And so that's kind of the the linchpin of what the looter meetups are. But then we're also going to try and we're, we're going to be doing some more in the future. We just haven't scheduled them out yet. And also like trying to reach out to other partners to do them in other cities um, where, you know, we, we may not necessarily be able to fly out there because we're based in L.A., but like try to have something for looters on the East Coast or in the Midwest. And, you know, we've got some ideas floating around already, which haven't finalized anything yet. But, you know, we'll also have hopefully giveaways and like the last one that we did here at Loot Crate. Um, we had, had Meltdown. Uh, loot Crate. <laughs> <laughs> Your life is loot. I know, right? Your 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 mind's still there. Exactly. Um, the last one that we did at Meltdown, we had the Skybound team come down, and they brought several decks of Super Fight, the card game, and we also had Darren, the creator of Super Fight, come down and actually play the game with people. So yeah, it was tons and tons. Oh, of and I mean, there were there are lines forming for that because yeah. you've done two here. Yes, and we've done two. They every time it's a huge success. Yes, and I'm sure we'll do another one before the end of the year. We're just trying right. to figure out what the best time is. Right. But yeah. And then people get mad at you though because it's only in LA. That's why we're trying yeah. to do more. And it's like I've I've actually I've had a couple conversations already with people who might potentially be partners for us to actually do one out of town. It's just figuring out the logistics. And That's like, you know, cool. if we are not going to be there, can we like maybe plan it out with them and then ship them stuff and have them run it and then like we'll sync up on social media and post photos and yeah there's a lot of different ways to approach it we're just kind of still we're still you know crack learning how to crack that nut and figure out what the best way is to do it because i've seen a lot of uh looters and and your fans they'll comment and say come to this city or come here and i see that a lot on the threads and so yeah I'm sure. And and that's a way for us to do it sort of on our own terms and our own timing because we know we're going to be at, at various conventions throughout right. the year. So, like, there will be an opportunity. We're going to be at New York Comic Con. So okay. people in New York will get to, you know, hang out. And I'm sure we'll have something special lined up for New York Comic Con as well. But, like, cool. you know, we would love to do it more in other parts of the country where, you know, we can have it more on that specific to our community sort right. of wavelength. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, a lot of your fans would like that. Oh yeah, yeah, I think so, and the community would just grow and grow even bigger uh, than that's already. That's what we is. hope. That's <laughs> what we're hoping for. Very nice, oh. very nice. So let me um, give a few shout outs real quick, and then we Nicole uh, has something very nice that she's going to have for the or for one lucky history of the Batman <laughs> podcast uh, fan, but. Meltdown is partners with Loot Crate, so if you go to LootCrate.com, sign up, figure out what subscription service works best for you, enter Meltdown in the promotional code section, you'll get $3 off your crate. Uh, Meltdown also, now I'm just giving plugs, so stay (laughs) tuned, Uh, Meltdown University, this is the school at Meltdown where they teach you the skills to make comic books. Some of the current classes include creating comics, drawing comics for kids, and the art of inking. So coming soon, there'll be classes for short film writing, drawing basics, and kid make, kids make zines. So go to MeltComics.com, enroll now. It's a very cool thing. Uh, a class just let out earlier today, and the kids are leaving with <laughs> artwork and smiles. <laughs> Also, this really cool thing that happens uh, at Meltdown um, called Meltology. It's a monthly comics jam. It's the e- every third Thursday of the month. Have you guys heard of this? Yes. yes. I know you have. You've heard about this too, Nicole? <laughs> mm. This is awesome. So what you do is you show up here at 7 p.m. You draw a page of whatever you want. At 9.30, they collect all the art. They collect $3 for printing costs. And when you come back the next month, You get a complete zine with everyone's contributions inside. There's no set theme. All skill skill levels are welcome. And, of course, as a contributor, you get 10% off your purchase at Meltdown. So on September 15th, 2015, so just coming up, the one-year anniversary of Meltology. And then there'll be one again October 20th. 
November 17th and December 15th. So go to at Meltology, at Melt underscore Thology on Twitter, or if you could do it on Facebook, if you have any specific questions, ask for Chuck. Also, <laughs> Comics Fix, our good and trusty Comics Fix. If you like to binge read your comics, are you having trouble tracking down all the back issues? Well, the answer is Comics Fix. It's a monthly digital subscription service where you pay a monthly fee and read as much as your heart desires. Go to ComicsFix.com and check it out. The first month is free. All right. I think it's time. Well, I don't know if anyone hears, but obviously things always go on (laughs) at Meltdown, and things are going on, and I think they're getting excited for Nicole. What? Are you going to offer one lucky fan his uh, Well, we're going to offer one lucky fan of the podcast a three-month subscription to Loot Crate. Ooh. Nice. That is awesome. <laughs> yes. All right. So all this goodness that you've heard about, Nicole's kind enough. So thank you, Nicole, for that. Absolutely. London, how are we, how are we going to pick a fan? Huh. <laughs> I think that there should be... That the... Fans should either res- have to listen in to this episode. Well, of course. Of course. Yes. And they need to know. I want to give them a question it. right now. Oh, I got it. I got it. You give got a it? Mr. Freeze related question. Can you give a Mr. Freeze related question? And if they email you with the right answer, the first one to do so gets a subscription? Sure. All right, so, because our next episode is probably going to be Mr. Freeze. Yes, we're going to do a character spotlight on Mr. Freeze and Uh, his history in comics and all other DC media. (laughs) All right, so what's what's a good question? Um, Do you know who Mr. Freeze is? Of course I know who Mr. Freeze (laughs) is. All right, I don't know. I mean, uh, well, well, let me ask you this, Nicole. When you think of Mr. Freeze, what do you think about? What comes to your mind? I actually think about... And again, this is it's where okay. I'm myself. I actually think about like the original 1966. Yes. Really? Yeah. Awesome. I wish I did. I always <laughs> think about Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> a lot of people think about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. Yeah. And I always think about the animated series. But the all animated series that... is actually, <laughs> the, the animated series version of Mr. Freeze is, of, of all the villains on that show, I think he's one of the coolest. Yes. Yeah. They actually, Pardon the pun. Yeah. <laughs> they actually got, I thought they got him right. In the in the animated series, Me too. yeah. <laughs> so was that? How did that? Well, I guess we'll talk. We're about going it next to talk week. more about that next episode. Yes, we'll talk about all of those different Mr. Freeze next episode. So do you know? Do you know Mr. Freeze's uh, real name, Nicole? Victor Freeze, right? Yes. Is that it? Jeez. Yes. Oh. Yeah. But I do have a question. <laughs> okay. Before okay, in in his first appearance, which we'll discuss in the next episode, he went by a different name. He didn't go by Mr. Freeze. Oh. <laughs> did you know this, Nicole? I didn't know this. That's actually a really good question. So yeah. yeah, whoever wins this really deserves it. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And so what? Just email you the the name the, yeah. the answer? Yes. It, and it's yeah. Just email me the an- the answer at historyofthebatman at gmail dot com. So don't tweet it so you can't tell anybody <laughs> right, right, right. or anything. So yes, you tweet you, it, you're giving it away. Yes, and then exactly. Gonna see so it you have to listen. And the question is, what was Mr. Free's first name in his first appearance in Batman comics. And so, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I like that because I didn't even know that was an issue. Did I. <laughs> uh, so then they will email you the answer. First one to do so wins a three-month subscription yes, to Loot Crate. Loot Thank Crate. you very much, Nicole, that for that. That is so you. kind of you. And so awesome. we can just get you the information, right? Yeah, of the... just when you get their information, send it on and we'll All get them All right. Up. All right. And that so great. is there anything else that you have for Nicole before we leave? I just am amazed how much the Lucre community has grown and what you've done. And like Adam mentioned earlier, how there are a lot of new subscription boxes out there, but Loot Crate just seems so dominant and seems like <laughs> the one that people are going to and are so excited about. And I love that you keep the mystery each month and that appeals to so many people because you would think in a way if people don't know what they're getting themselves into they won't be interested but the fact that you hit on all different types of pop culture it entices people and so i think loot crate is doing a great job with building a geeky community well thank you very much and i mean (laughs) i think part of that is 
as I was saying before, down to the fact that we were the first one really on the market doing these kinds of um, items in a subscription box. So we've got seniority in that respect. But I mean, like I said, we're always continually trying to innovate, trying to offer new products, trying to offer things that people can't get anywhere else and that are, you know, upping our game constantly and reaching as many people as possible. And I mean, I know that there are endeavors in place now to try to still continue to expand our, our subscriber base and try to you know, do a lot more new and exciting things. And I think we'll have a lot of, there are a lot of really cool announcements coming down the pike. So people should definitely, you know, keep their eyes peeled oh, and definitely. eyes and ears. <laughs> uh, all right. So Nicole, I got a few questions for you though. Yeah. All right. What's your favorite comic book of all time? Oh my God. <laughs> That's tough. Um, there are so many comics that I love that are out right Or comic now. stories or, or just... What you know? Any series? The comic, the-, the comic stories that that pulled me in, that really made me a huge, the huge comic book fan that I am today, are like all of the nineteen eighties Chris Claremont X Men oh, stories. Nice, <laughs> like that's that's what drew John me in. Byrne too, right? Yeah, like the those that era of X Men is is what really kind of drew me into being a, a big comic book reader. How, how, what was it about that at that moment? That uh, I think it was the quality of the writing, the the quality of um, the character. The character-driven stories, but also the diversity of the cast. I mean, that's part of the reason why I think X Men has appealed to, at, in particular, to a lot of people is the diversity of the characters. Um, I know that in particular to me, especially when I was young, an impressionable young reader, like I loved the fact that there were so many female characters in X Men. Oh yeah, definitely. And Claremont in particular wrote women really well. Like he wrote them. Not only with a lot of strengths, but a lot of vulnerabilities, and like uh, there were fully rounded female characters, and that's one thing that hugely appealed to me when I was younger. So that was one aspect of it. Um, there are other other titles that have I've dipped my toe in as what? I've gone along. Um, I love all of the Sandman stuff. I'm a big Neil Gaiman fan. Nice. Um, me too. <laughs> something that I've I've loved dearly. Um, and then also, gosh, what else? What are you reading now that you like? Uh, now I love Saga. I'm just <gasps> Me absolutely too, obsessed Brian K. Vaughan. with Saga. Love it. Yes. Um, it's fantastic. I am reading. Um, well, we just got to the end of Matt Fraction's run of Hawkeye, which was just freaking flawless. I mean, we waited so long for that last issue, and I was like, is he going to stick the landing? And I thought it was fantastic. Wow. Um, and so the that, art was great for Oh, that yeah. Too. The I mean, art was it. great. And it's, it was wonderful. And the because- covers... The covers were amazing, and what I loved was that like he went back and forth between a few, a couple of, of artists because like he had David Aya d- did most of it, but then like the issues where Kate Bishop went to L.A. it was Annie Wu, and it was a completely different sort of style, which made sense for Kate's storyline. Um, but yeah, I thought that 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 was fantastic. I've loved, um, I love Sex Criminals as well, which is I think is so funny. Oh and yeah, so just. Do you get the Amazing. recent episode or the episode, the recent issue in the bag? I didn't get the issue in the bag, but I follow Chip Zdarsky on Twitter. And he, every time somebody tweeted him, hey, I got one, he would retweet it. And then I would be sitting there on the train. <laughs> like I would I load up my Twitter before I get on the train and then I scroll through it as I'm on the train because he didn't get any signals. And I take the train downtown. And so I would be scrolling through and then just like laughing myself silly. And people are staring at me and I'm like, no, I really can't show you what it is that I'm uh, laughing at <laughs> right now. Who got the sketch cover? <laughs> exactly. Who got the dirty sketches? Um, but yeah, gosh, what else is really good right now? I just started reading. Um, I haven't read a whole lot of super recent DC titles, but again, partially because I'm a, I love Annie Wu's uh, ri- uh, art, I just started reading the Black Canary series. Yes, that's a really great series. Which right is now. so good. It is. It's so good. I love it. You guys are some major readers. <laughs> How do you get anything done? It's tough. I mean, honestly. No sleep. Yeah. I, I, and and that's, like, that's me picking and choosing. Like, there are a ton of other things. Like, I actually have... Again, going back to, I'm a huge fan of Daredevil, and I was reading Mark Wade's run oh, yeah. consistently up to a point, and then I kind of dropped off, and now I have like a stack of, I have to finish, and he's yeah. almost done. <laughs> I've got like a bunch I have to catch up on. But it's nice to binge read. Exactly. Yes. Which is the benefit of comics fix. Exactly. Um, <laughs> 
Oh, okay. Favorite mo- favorite pop culture-y, hit comic book styled movie. Comic book styled movie? Yeah, or, you know, it, yeah, it could be Star Trek too. It could, favorite nerd movie? Favorite yes. nerd movie? Oh gosh, there's way too many. Um, <laughs> I am a huge, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. If you're gonna say Star Trek, I think Star Trek: Wrath of Khan is the best. That's the best <laughs> yes. movie ever. Uh, Shadow <laughs> Adam. There he is. Star Trek: Wrath of Khan <laughs> is amazing. Although I have to say. I really, really loved, I would say it's probably the one good Star Trek The Next Generation movie, which is First Contact, mm. which is the one where they go back in time and the Borg, or the Borg go back in time and they have to stop them. I think that one was That one fantastic. was directed by Jonathan Frakes. It was directed by Jonathan Frakes, who I think they one. should get him to direct another Star yeah. Trek movie. I thought he did an amazing job. He was, he was good with that one. Yeah. Um, and then, gosh, what else? I mean, as far as comic book uh, films go, I really, really liked... Uh, I have to say, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Oh, that was good. That's a great one that because was it it wasn't just a, a great superhero movie. Superhero it was, a movie. Spy. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like it was like a nineteen seventies paranoid thriller <laughs> in type of story, which are is a particular subgenre of movies that I really love. And then just to kind of like underline the fact, the fact that they had. Robert Redford, who was in Three Days of the Condor, in the movie as well, was kind of like, I know that wasn't the intention, but it kind of <laughs> added to that feeling as well. So It yeah. was awesome. I thought, it, I, I think of all the Marvel movies to date, it's probably my favorite. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would not argue against you yeah. on that one. Um, okay. Favorite TV series? Favorite? Nerd, geek, culture... My all-time favorite nerd TV series is the reimagined Battlestar Galactica. Mm. Oh, I okay. absolutely adore that show. I mean, I've watched it a few times since it's been on the air. I go back How to it all the How many seasons did it go? It went four seasons. Wow. On Sci-Fi Channel. And four seasons plus a four-hour miniseries that kicked <laughs> it off. And I think that's part of the reason why it really... They, Ron Moore's storytelling is so like his world building is insane. He he has so many facets to like the way that government works, the way that society works, the way that culture works, and, and like he, he thinks about. And all he of did this it stuff. all on Battlestar Galactica. He did it all on Battlestar Galactica. And what's fun well, about I that show? Go watch it. You <laughs> should watch it. What's fun about it is it's really he took he took all the kind of cheesiness out of the original show, and what he really ended up making was almost more like a political drama. It's there are episodes where they're like it feels like the West Wing in space. Like it, it huh. it's it's got That's a very strong sort of like <laughs> all this socio political stuff about like the humans versus the Cylons and colonization and we're at war and all this kind of stuff. It's so much weightier than than the original show. But then as the show goes along, he starts to introduce other aspects of like what it means to be a Cylon. Do they have a soul? Are they, you know, I mean, it, it gets really deep. Wow. So that show I love. As far as shows that are on the air right now. Um, Were you down with Daredevil? I loved Daredevil. <laughs> I loved Daredevil. And I was so happy because, honestly, Daredevil's a character that I, and I had to, I talked about this in another podcast, that I've, I've kind of danced around periodically because there are some storylines of Daredevil that I really have not cared for at all. And I, by no means have I exhaustively read all of the issues over the years, but there are certain ones like, and I feel like there are certain storylines of his that have just been like persistent and like, yeah. come on, break break the mold a little bit, guys. And Do Mark Wade different. did that. That's part of the reason why I liked Mark Wade. And I know that like a lot of hardcore Daredevil fans were like, no, he needs to be darker. But I was like, no, I thought it was fun. He had fun with the character. No one had really had fun with him to that point. Um, but what I loved about the TV show is that it took all the things I love about Matt Murdock and it like left all of the things that I hate. Yeah. And so <laughs> it really, it really nailed it for me in that regard. I'm super excited about all of the upcoming, like I'm beside myself excited about Jessica Jones. Yeah. Like, ugh, I can't even, like I, I follow Brian Bendis on Tumblr and he had posted about the fact that he saw the first two episodes and he thought that they nailed it. And I'm like, all right, Bendis likes it. I'm down. Sold. <laughs> Sold. Um, but yeah, that's great. God, what else is really good right now? Penny Dreadful is amazing. No, I don't even know. Is anybody that. watching Penny Dreadful? It's on I've the show. It's on Showtime. It. It's a Victorian 
horror series. Ooh. Horror. I know yeah. that I love. It's horror. amazing. It's oh, it's it's goodness. kind of it's similar in certain respects to the kind of vibe of um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Okay. And so you've got all these characters um, like uh, uh, Victor Frankenstein is in there, and the main character is Mina Harker's father. And or one of the main characters played by Timothy Dalton, and then he's got this semi adoptive daughter played by Ava Green, who is insanely amazingly talented. Dorian Gray is in there as well, and then um, there's um, Josh Hartnett's character, who I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't seen it, but you can want to watch it now. <laughs> oh, it's so good! It's so good. If you have oh. Showtime, it's on demand. First two seasons, okay. It's Amazing. Mental note. London's yeah. big into horror. I am. You'll love it. You will love it. It's fantastic. Okay. All right. Now bring it real quick back to Batman. Yes. What's your favorite Batman movie and your favorite or, or favorite Batman media that's not comic? That's not comic. So it could be animation. It could be movie. It could be I TV really, show. I really love the animated series. Um, so there's multiple animated series, the, right? For, the, okay. what, whichever one was the one... Was it just called Batman the Animated Series or the one in the 90s? The, the one that introduced Harley, basically. Yeah, Batman the Animated Batman Series. Batman the Animated yeah. Series. That the one. Early 90s I one. think it's fantastic. Yes. Who did that one? Uh, Paul Dini, Dini. Bruce yeah. Tim. Yeah. yeah. They were the that main That I've always found to be sort of the, as far as the, the um, cartoon, uh, the cartoon storytelling sort of renaissance. Like, I'm a big fan of, of the 90s X-Men show, but it's super cheesy. Like, that was <laughs> super duper cheesy. Like, that was sort of afternoon or Saturday morning, you know, cartooning still. Like, when I was sort of late junior high going into high school, I think was when that was on. But I feel like the Dini Batman was where it really kind of j- jumped into a whole other level of, of animated series yes. storytelling. And that, like, the DC and Marvel shows from that point on kind of moved forward. Matured. Yes. Matured a bit. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. So thank you, London. <laughs> thank you, Shadow Adam. No problem. And thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. All fun. right. So, London, if people want to reach you, how do we do that? Well, especially if they want to try to get the three month subscription. And you definitely <laughs> want to do that. Reach me, shoot me an email at historyofthebatman at gmail.com. You can always message me on Instagram.com slash history of the Batman or any of the other social media sites, twitter.com slash hist of the Batman, Facebook.com slash history of the Batman and history of the Batman dot com. But yes, I love all the feedback and comments and if you have episode ideas anything email me at history of the batman at gmail.com nicole you got any shouts anything you want to do um yeah i mean i guess well thanks for having me You're and, uh, <laughs> and i guess if we have any looters who are, are currently fans of the show and listeners <laughs> uh, hello thanks for being awesome <laughs> we love you um, and I guess the thing that I would say is to look out for our September crate, which we just announced the theme for today. The theme is Summon. Ooh. And so it's char- It's sort of, you know, focusing on franchises where there are characters that you call forth or summon in some yeah. fashion or whatever. Oh, boy. That sounds um, awesome. We have... We have <laughs> sounds kind of horror, maybe. Yeah. Well, sort of. Um, it, it could it, it, be. It's kind of across the map. Um, we have... Pokemon in there, which is oh. something that you summon. And po- surprisingly, Pokemon is like one of our most requested oh, Pokemon sure. that we've is had awesome. for a long time. I'm excited. And so we're super <laughs> excited to have Pokemon in there. We also have um, Hearthstone, which is a really popular uh, digital game from Blizzard. So we're going to have some cool Hearthstone items. Um, and we have another franchise that we have frequently been asked for that's never been featured in a crate before, which if you're a horror fan... Presumably, you might be somewhat interested in, and that is Supernatural. Oh, Oh, okay. Nice. So we've got a Supernatural exclusive collectible variant in this crate. So we're super excited about that. Amazing. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, Listeners, thank you once again for tuning in to the History of the Batman with London, presented by Meltdown Comics. I'd also like to remind you that Meltdown's got a ton of other shows that we're putting out. We've got the Disney Click which you can check out on iTunes or on MeltComics.com. It's a podcast where they just talk Disney. I mean, who doesn't want to talk Disney? 
Uh, we got Meltcast 3.0. It's where the Meltdown employees talk about new comics, get into other shenanigans. These guys are nuts. So you can listen to them. And then also on YouTube, we've got the Digital Lizards of Doom show, which is uh, Meltdown's very own YouTube show. We've got Gabe and Dan explore all aspects of pop culture. It's a super great show. Check it out. Enjoy it. Have fun. And thanks again for listening. Also, I do never want to forget Mason Booker, the engineer and producer. And as we like to say on the or as London likes to say on the Instagram page peace love and Batman see you next week